Okay, before we start, let's just briefly review the solution steps for walking uh, using uh, inverted pendulum. Recall that for the um, double uh, bipedal, simplest bipedal model, we have a center mass at the pelvic point, and there is a very, very small mass to uh, introduce to describe the swing, swing dynamics, right? So we have a two um, variables, like a step variable, theta and phi. So equations of motion for simplest bipedal models, like uh, inverted pendulum um, equations of motion for the stance leg, and just regular pendulum uh, equations of motion for the swing leg. And for swing legs, since this is attached to the pelvic point, their acceleration behave as um, um, ex uh, excitations, right? And then note that those are uh, walking down through the slope. Those slope uh, is taking the role for the uh, external forces. And then we take the integral of the equations of motion up to the point where collision occurs, which has a same leg, like a, a same leg a configuration, symmetric configuration for the uh, stance leg angle theta and phi. And at impact, during the impact, we apply the angular impulse momentum relationship to transfer the before collision information into after collision information. And the new stance phase start. So after that, we just repeat these procedures until we obtain the limit cycle, the fixed point. And once we find the, find the fixed point, we uh, check the stability by checking the eigenvalues of the Jacobian. So again, um, that, that are the procedures. And then let's see how those are changed with the spring leg. Now, the spring leg, we only have a single mass. Okay, but single mass, uh, different from the inverted pendulum, those x and y's are... Um, not in not de, not in not dependent okay since your even though your theta is defined your l may vary so you should have x and y the two variables to describe the position of center of mass okay so you have a two variable for the single mass and again here the gravity was the force source for the um, pendulum motion but here you have a spring forces that'll apply the force for the mass motion so the main difference for the uh, inverted pendulum model versus the slim model is you have a spring force as a force source. Again, uh, for inverted pendulum, you have a two masses, capital and a small mass for the two states. But these two states for the slim model is only for a single mass at the pelvic point. Okay, now uh, for the inverted pendulum model, you integrate it up to the collision point where theta equals to phi, but here, there is a predefined, predefined touchdown and touchdown configure leg configuration. So touchdown angle alpha here is defined, predefined, and at that point the double support occurs. So there is a, a different um, condition for for collision. Um, the main difference here is for the impact for the rigid uh, pendulum, uh, you can't really solve it because usually the impact, the collision involves the um, energy dissipation by by the damping com components, right? So even though those uh, impact, impulsive force profiles are given, you have to know what are the um, damping or collision loss, that the friction loss involved for that uh, collision um, moment. So without describing the details, we only um, focus on the right before collision and right after collision. That's what we have done for the inverted pendulum uh, pro procedures. But for the spring, spring, there is no energy uh, dissipation. There's no, um, so as far as you know the force, you will figure that out the motion. So um, the, there is a continuous leg compression occurs and no, it's not an impact problem. So you can just solve the dynamics continuously, okay? So uh, since you're, there are continuous dynamics, those um, double support phase are now um, solved in a finite duration as opposed to the uh, rigid leg. Rigid leg, we assume that instantaneous uh, double support phase. That's the biggest difference between the two. And again, the double support stop, stops when the trailing leg reaches to its natural length L of L, L0, L0. Okay, so there are different conditions for the double to single support and um, collision problems. So these are the main differences. But up to that, after that, uh, finding the repeated solution using the fixed point and check the uh, stabilities are all, all very similar. 
Okay, now let's see how we can obtain the um, equations of motion. The very first thing is we are going to define the kinematics, as I said uh, in the previous slides. The coordinate is I'm going to set it as a um, ground contact point here, similar to the inverted pendulum. Again, here, uh, instead of having just only theta value, we have to define the state value L because L varies again uh, as well as theta. So your X and Y will be described by the L sine theta, L cosine theta, and its time derivative for the velocity will be obtained like this. And additional term about the L dot term, okay, since L dot is now uh, not a constant. It's the case for the inverted pendulum. So your velocity term has a little bit more complicated compared to the inverted pendulum. Same for the acceleration. So you have four acceleration components about theta double dot and L theta dot square, which is centripetal acceleration, and newly introduced L double dot term, and this L dot theta dot Coriolis acceleration term. Okay, and we could also express it as a Jacobian, like a two by two matrix with the uh, L dot theta dot uh, state derivative, J theta dot, and your acceleration is going to be J theta double dot plus J dot theta dot. Okay, so uh, with this uh, initial condition, uh, the next step is maybe the spring will, will be um, stretched because we know that for the walking, the center of mass will be um, moves up and down, right? And then a few moments later, the spring then um, is going to be compressed again. So at a certain point, um, collision occurs. So the double support, is our, double support is initiated. Where? When? When the uh, predefined L0 and alpha has been um, reached. So your Y1, the height, is going to be matching with L0 sine alpha. There is where the double support started. And since your stance leg with the additional uh, resistive force now is going to um, extend it instead of compression. And for your leading leg, it's going to start compress from the natural length to a certain value to describe this uh, new stance leg. Well, additional stance leg or leading leg, I'm going to set another reference frame at the um, another ground contact point here. So it's going to be L2 theta 2, the newly introduced uh, state variable, okay, extra state variable. So uh, to describe the motion during the double support, do we need then four state variables like a theta 1, L1, theta 2, L2? Well, not really. Uh, note that when you actually hit the ground for, for the leading leg, there is a step length that's been determined, right? So your um, L1 prime, prime is meaning um, the L1 value at the moment of double support initiation and theta prime as well. So it's going to be step length defined by L1 prime sine theta 1 prime plus predefined L0 sine alpha, right? And that doesn't change during the double support phase. Those contact points doesn't change, which means your theta 1, L1 are a function is the function of theta 2 and L2. So that's what we call the kinematic constraints of the bursophor phase. So when you describe the um, x2, um, uh, the center of mass in terms of a uh, new coordinate, which is x2 and y2, that's going to be also expressed by the x1 and y1. So those uh, um, variables are um, dependent with each other. So once uh, you figure that out, L1 and theta1, the other one is de determined. Okay, so that's the kinematics involved for the slim model. And then that the double support ends when the trailing leg reaches its natural length. Okay, so when it reaches the natural length, the new uh, single stance phase started. Okay. So let's work on the kinetics then. What are the forces involved? For the single support phase, you only have a single spring, so there are spring forces aligned with the uh, spring leg, and the uh, gravity is applied for the mass, and then uh, since this is only ground contact, uh, there is a spring forces are equivalent to the minus ground reaction forces. So you have x directional equations of motion only by the spring and y directional equations of motion um, caused by the spring resistive force and the gravity. And for the double support phase, you have additional spring force term, so you should add that. So two springs are forces are uh, generating x directional acceleration, and two spring forces and the gravity generate the acceleration for the y direction. 
So from here to here, from single to the double, uh, you should switch the equations of motion when you reach to the uh, double support phase, which is y1 equals to predefined um, double leg configuration, which is L0 sine alpha. And then now when you reach to that state, you are switching the equations of motion from single to double, and you solve this until when the uh, trailing leg reaches to its natural length. Okay, so this trailing leg reaches its natural length. You should switch solving the equations of motion from this one to the single support one. So you just go back and forth and back and forth. So compared to the um, inverted pendulum uh, walking model, inverted pendulum walking model, the main differences are uh, you are now solving the collision, right? So double support phase, that's the collision, right? So instead of just applying the, uh, momentum conservation, etc., you actually solve it because it's continuous uh, dynamics instead of collision or impact. Another different thing you may have already um, recognized is that there is no swing leg, okay? So swing leg, without solving the swing leg dynamics, we predefine the swing leg configuration at the double support phase. So that's... Um, that's the main difference. We only are handling the single mass on the pel located at the pelvis and the spring leg and no swing leg. Um, okay, so I'm going to introduce one more concept for your reference. Uh, sometimes you might hear the telescopic leg. What that means is, suppose you only have a, a spring, massless spring, there is no way you can apply the torque because uh, it's a massless. So whenever you apply the torque, uh, spring should have um, sh then it means there's a um, not uh, not spring aligned force exists okay so suppose that it's a spring but it's actually the structure rigid structure that can change its length like a telescope okay what that means is maybe your structure hmm, not only having the force component through the axis also can be um, can hold the forces horizontal right so when you have a um, spring kind of a compliant leg with the torque that means it's a telescopic leg holding the uh, horizontal forces that matches with the torque applied like a, something like t divided by the l kind of forces applied here so even though it's massless uh, you can hold both um, ax axial directional and um, perpendicular to the axial directional forces so when we call the telescopic leg that means change of length and with uh, forces not only uh, aligned with the leg, but also non-aligning force exist, just for your reference. Okay, again, um, we have so far obtained the equations of motion for the slim model, and those are obtained by like this, in terms of x double dot and y double dot. So if I just plug in, in all those uh, kinematics relationship for the x and y in terms of l and theta, I can obtain the formulation like this, and as you can see, there are many sine and cosine kind of components exist in uh, x and y. So if I could simplify them by multiplying cosine and sine for each term, I could have, uh, I, I, I could get this uh, spring force are generating a centripetal acceleration for the theta component and um, L directional acceleration. And gravity is generating acceleration in the theta double dot. Looks like an inverted pendulum kind of thing, plus Coriolis acceleration. So these are the two sets of um, equations of motion describing the slip model. Okay, so one may think, oh, uh, we only apply the Newton's law. Uh, where, what if, if I apply the moment equation, like a moment equals I alpha form? Am I supposed to obtain the equivalent form of that? Well, let's try it. So if I obtain the moment equation of the slip model with respect to point O here, so the only external force is the gravity, so I have mg L sine theta, which is uh, I alpha. I here is a point mass from the uh, distance of the of L, so it's going to be ML square theta double dot. Wait, is this the same? Is, isn't this supposed to be the same? Mm, well, this one has ML theta dot plus Coriolis acceleration, but this one doesn't. Where, which one goes wrong? Well, note that when we talk about F equals MA, moment equals I alpha, that means your moment of inertia and mass are constant. Original form of Newton's law is F equals the time rate of a, a linear momentum 
moment equals the time rate of angular momentum. So if I just follow the definition, angular momentum change, then I'm going to take the derivative of ml square and theta dot. And since your L is not going to be constant anymore, your it changes the length, you will have a time derivative for the derivative term for the L as well as time derivative term for the theta dot. So that's what I have. Uh, Coriolis acceleration and um, angular acceleration term here. So this one is equivalent to the one that I obtained from Newton's law. Okay. Okay. Now someone may think, well, instead of applying the Newton's law, I might get the equation um, equations of motion using Lagrange's equation. Of course, you can do it. So generalized coordinate is now theta and l. Your um, kinetic energy is going to be l theta dot square plus l dot square. Your potential energy, not only the gravitational potential energy, you also have a um, spring potential energy. So you plug that into the, uh, the formula. What you can get is two sets of equations of motions about um, L double dot and centripetal acceleration and theta double dot and Coriolis acceleration, which is equivalent to the, the equations what you obtained from, from uh, Newton's law. Okay, if I uh, review the solution uh, steps for the slip, uh, we have uh, equations of motion for the single and double support phase. Again, those alpha and L naught is predefined. So you have equations for the single support and double support separately and just switch it back and forth, single and double, depending on the leg length. So you're, um, uh, you have a, if you have a second leg configuration as a predefined touchdown angle, then you switch to the double support phase. And when your trailing leg reaches to the natural leg length, so the force applied by the trailing leg turns out to be zero, now you go back to the single support phase. So you're just going back and forth this step until you find a repeated uh, solution. Once you find a repeated solution, which is fixed point, you check the stability.